now the physiology of regulation of breathing okay regulation of breathing is under a lot of control mainly you have the cns okay and then you have the chemoreceptors now also with this we have various other phenomena which influence them but for them to influence they either have to pass through the cns mechanism or they have to go through the chemoreceptor mechanism and even chemoreceptor finally goes through the cns mechanism itself so regulation of breathing when we breathe we have something to do with inspiration something to do with expiration then there is the rate of breathing and then there is the rhythm of breathing who controls this the brain that's common everyone knows that the brain controls all this how does it do it where does the signal actually come from which part of brain actually does that that's what we are going to look at in this video and i would like to thank i think it was mahesh kumar for requesting this because it's not just physiology where it's going to be of in importance i remember my first anesthesia posting i think where the first question was mechanism of breathing now breathing comes from the brain yes but it does not find importance only in physiology okay if you go to anesthesia it's of high importance when the patient is there he's intubated he's under anesthesia and muscle relaxant he's not going to be able to breathe on his own why because the muscles are paralyzed okay then when you give him anesthetics and all when you depress his cns system what's depress what does anesthesia do it actually reduces your brain activity and stops the impulses from reaching the brain so that the person doesn't get the signals okay it doesn't get the signals of pain or whatever we are doing to him even the touch sensation is all lost okay and we try to induce sleep so that there's a loss of memory of the experience that the person experiences in the ot in anesthesia okay if the person can't breathe it's a disaster okay when you have intubated him and you are providing external mechanism if he starts breathing again again there will be a disruption between the mechanisms so even in anesthesia you find importance and also you find importance in forensic okay in forensic when you come to judicial hanging a per judicial hanging is different from normal hanging what happens is a person is dropped from a height with the so wait i'll just draw it out for you a person is there there will be a noose tied around his neck like this okay and he is dropped from a height so that he falls and while this falls there will be a pulling force from the noose onto his body which will lead to the fracture of the c2 vertebra the atlanto axial joint so the c2 vertebra has a spine which fits into the c1 now there is a fracture of this area so the spine enters the brain stem and injures it now because of this this is the spinal cord okay the spinal cord is passing through the vertebra and the fracture leads for this piece of the spine of axis okay the spine of axis that c2 enters and damages the mid brain the brain stem here is where your respiratory centers lie now damage to them the respiration stops and the person dies not because yes the person in hanging dies because of stoppage of breathing but not because of tracheal compression he dies because of respiratory paralysis in the brain okay so without further ado we'll get into it now the videos will be divided of course as always they'll be made more digestible so in the first part we'll be looking at the brain how the regulation of respiration occurs in the brain and in the second part we'll look at the chemoreceptors and uh, all the other things like how pain affects it how baroreceptors have work how j receptors work and all those okay so first here we'll be looking at the brain now the respiratory centers are located in the pons and medulla 
in the pawns we have two we have apneustic and the pneumotactic okay pneumotactic apneustic in the medulla we have the dorsal group of nerves and the ventral group of nerves okay this much is simple then we have the spinal cord and the midbrain so pons and medulla important out of this the main one is dorsal dorsal is the main one there's no denying that dorsal is the main why is it the main okay so first we look at the dorsal dorsal belongs to the medullary group of neurons where does it lie it lies in the tractus solitarius okay and what does it do it's responsible for inspiration and it has autorhythmicity so it's comparable with the sa node of the heart okay it has autorhythmicity and it's the main one okay now it has inspiration but it cannot do expiration so the only way for you to expire is by stopping this okay so you need to stop the stimulation of the dorsal group of neurons of the medulla for you to be able to expire there's no other way it only does inspiration now how do we know this how do we know that it only leads to expiration because there was an experiment where they took dogs or mouse i can't clearly remember there was some experimental animal then this stimulated the dorsal group of neurons which led to increase in depth and duration of inspiration so that's how we know that dorsal group of nucleus are responsible for inspiration because stimulation of them did not increase expiration it just kept on increasing inspiration inspiration, inspiration. that's all okay then we we'll look at the ventral group ventral group again is a medullary group and is responsible for both inspiration and expiration but not normal ones normal ones when i say normal i mean quiet ones that's the one which we do when we are having a normal day to day activities they lead to forced okay when you having forced respiration like during exercise you have forced breathing then they come into action now they do both inspiration and expiration which means ventral have to have an effect on dorsal group of neurons because inspiration is that's the main center they help in expiration by helping inhibit the dorsal neurons they don't cause expiration they stop the dorsal neurons when it suits them okay that's how ventral neurons work where are they located nucleus ambiguous and retro ambiguous now how do they know that they are involved in forced breathing again same there was an experimental animal you stimulated that and we got the result quite simple as that now uh, one more thing is respiration is involuntary it's automatic okay respiration is involuntary or automatic but it can be made voluntary of course it is volunt you you can take control over your breathing but you can't do it for a long period of time it's only for a short period so imagine if you stopped breathing at a max you could do it for 40 seconds 60 seconds 2 minutes maybe but after that it would come back to involuntary control by itself and even if you wanted to forced breathing you can't do it forever eventually it comes back to involuntary control later on so now we look at the pontine centers okay So you have the pons, you have the apneustic, and you have the pneumotaxon. Now, when you're looking at the apneustic, to better understand it, let's look at what it means. A new is tick. Now, ap new, ap new leads to apneusis. This is a condition. Apnea, apnea means absence of breathing. Okay. But it has nothing to do with apnea. It leads to something called apneusis. Okay. What is apneusis? It's an abnormal type of breathing. 
abnormal type of breathing in which there is increased inspiration okay increased depth and duration of inspiration followed by an expiration which is short a short expiration which is of course if you're having an inspiration for long duration you need to have somewhat of a normal expiration but now the expiration is short so it's literally ineffective that is apneusis it's an abnormal type of respiration where there is increased inspiration followed by a short expiration which is ineffective so apneustic center over stimulation causes apneusis we also confirmed this by experiment now apneustic center where does it lie it lies in nucleus of reticular formation now retic in the reticular formation it lies in the lower part lower pons okay when we look at the pneumotactic center it also lies in the nucleus reticular uh, of uh, reticular formation but it lies in the upper pons okay might as well mention it here so make a note of it the pneumotactic center lies in also reticular formation but in the upper pons okay i won't mention it later so make a note of it now upper pons and the apneustic center lies in the lower pons now again they did an experiment they figured it out that apneustic center is responsible for increase in depth and duration of inspiration how does it do that it does this by stimulation of you guessed it it's dorsal dorsal nucleus of medulla dorsal group of neurons and it leads to apneusis so when we come to pneumotactic center pneumotactic center is again upper pons reticular formation and it comes from para brachial and supra para brachial supra para brachial nucleus and it lies in the yeah so the main function of pneumotactic center is switching switching of what it helps in switching between inspiration to expiration pneumotactic center that is the main function here we finally find the answer on what regulates the expiration the pneumotactic center how does it do that it leads this by inhibition of dorsal nucleus just in a bit set if you let it be free it inspires but if you want an expiration you have to stop it if you don't stop it there is no necessity to stimulate the dorsal nucleus it will inspire by itself for expiration is when you need to interfere okay now the pneumotactic center is responsible for expiration and by switching it can also regulate the rate of respiration okay and while on experiment what they did was they tried to stimulate it they tried to stimulate the pneumotactic center and nothing much happened it just pneumotactic center is responsible for the normal breathing cycle okay you inspire and you expire inspire and expire what is the stimulation of it going to do nothing but when they destroyed it okay when they destroyed it so stimulation had no effect but when they destroyed it it went into apneusis what's apneusis increased breathing without expiration okay so that's how it worked i think it's enough for this video it has been for long so there'll be a part two regulation of respiration in that we'll take on the chemical regulation and the other things which influences the respiration hearing broad reflex and all those so i'll see you in my next video thank you for watching bye